and this game that rings true basically in this game you are racing your opponents gathering boss cards and bringing them home before anybody else <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is called Sisyphus Corp in which you're playing with three other opponents moving around the board and you're a corporate lackey attempting to satisfy three different bosses. You'll be moving around the board sending paperwork from one boss to another making them happy and having them give you little proposals that will give you benefits, little achievements here and as you do that you're going to attempt to make your way back to your desk and if you can do that for the meeting in which they're going to determine how well you stand in the company before anybody else you'll win the game now of course you have to satisfy certain rules you'll have to be moving based on placing certain tiles or cards down on the board and making sure you utilize sticky notes to get yourself through the board before other players if you can trip other players up in this racing game while attempting to maneuver yourself into the best position you'll win the game let's go ahead and take a look down below i'll show you what it includes how to play and then we'll come up and do my review and you can take a look down below and link in the description to pick up the game if you'd like. And here we have the game Sisyphus Corp and it's all set up for four players. Set the game up, all you're going to need to do is place each of the bosses in their areas and they're color coded by blue, green, and red. Go ahead and set your new hiring orientation card here in the bottom right, as well as your four workers. Each worker is going to be placed based on the player and each player has their own player board based on color, green, yellow, red, and blue. Set aside your company influence with this little tracker here go ahead and place three unused hours spent over here on this side and of course you're going to have sticky notes to start the game with a max of two each player is also going to get a certain number of tile cards here these are tiles that can be placed on the board remember that they're going to have sticky notes on them which will determine whether or not you can move from one area to another you need to attach sticky notes in order to place them on the board and move across to, to them they need to be adjacent to a space that you can move to uh, there's also going to be these office politics cards. Now, based on the game you choose to play, and there's a bunch of different variants to the game, there will be different types of cards throughout the game that you're going to be setting aside and choosing between. So they might give you four or five different card types to play with that all do different things, and you can utilize these cards to manipulate the board, manipulate your character, and manipulate your opponent's characters as well. There's also, of course, a deck of tiles or cards that you'll be utilizing in the game to basically facilitate moving across the board and getting to your bosses. And there's also going to be boss cards here. These are cards you're going to achieve. They're basically called Certificates of Achievement, that when you walk onto a boss space, you'll be gathering one of these, and there's enough for each of the players to be able to get one. And once you've gotten to each of these bosses here, you're going to move back to your starting tile, and you're going to win the game if you're the first person there. It's a racing game of sorts. And to start the game, it's pretty simple. You'll choose a player, maybe somebody who is last in office politics, or last in an office paying job, and you're going to go ahead and utilize three actions. You'll spend these actions on the board here and you'll be able to utilize these different actions. One of them is moving and you can go ahead and move to a neighboring card uh, that is basically connected by a sticky note. Uh, you can place a tile and or card on the board um, from your hand onto a neighboring uh, tile uh, that is in empty space. You can research, basically allowing you to gain one company influence, and then you can turn one of your cards from your hand, one of these guys here, into a wild card. These cards are going to cost influence. They'll also cost cards of the same type. And if you do not have additional cards of the same type to increase the benefits of that card, you can use research to basically give yourself those cards. And the final one is memos. You can either choose to place a sticky note on the board into two connecting spaces. So for instance, if this was placed like this, there's obviously no sticky note attaching these two. So you can go ahead and place a memo just like that, allowing yourself to go from one uh, tile space to another, but they stay there and anybody can utilize them. So let's go ahead and go through the different actions now that I've talked about them. Uh, first one you're gonna probably wanna do is place. So this player can go ahead and take this and place it here allowing them to place. And then when they do that, they'll get a new one of these cards here. Uh, another action, like I said, is move. You can move to an adjacent space. So this is green and green can move because of the sticky notes. As you can see, sticky notes are what are required in order to move from space to space. And if they do not have them, you cannot move there. Research, you can earn company influence. So if I placed one over here, I'd gain one influence. And let's say that I had, uh, I don't know, I'll just randomly take some cards. These guys here in my hand, 
Uh, some of them are going to say certain things like this one, trade meeting notes. This one's going to have a cost, which says one influence. This one says a certain number of influence. And this is one of an additional card. And so if you want, you can turn one of these cards into a duplicate of this card here, spend the influence and utilize these cards based on the cost in order to do what it says. So it'll tell you what it does. There's different add-ons you can utilize. Sometimes they're going to let you reorientate the board or move other players, move yourself, teleport yourself and all all kinds of things. There's a ton of different things that all office politics cards can do. And then, like I said, finally, let's just say that there is an extra card here. I could, if I wanted to, instead of going there in the research space, I can go to the memo space, take that and place this here. And this will allow me or any other player to move across when spending the movement um, action to go across onto this space here. That will get me closer to one of these bosses. And those are pretty much the actions you can take in the game if you so choose. Now, when you get to a boss, so for instance, let's just say that uh, green, the green player managed to uh, get to a boss by placing down, let's see if we have enough tiles here. I'll, I'll choose one that's more realistic, perhaps. Um, there are some that are obviously better than others, like this one here. This one will let you get farther. And uh, let's say I did this, and let's say I had one more sticky note. So this is a pathway to getting to the boss. So what he'll need to do is go from here to here to here, obviously utilizing the sticky notes because they're not attached via cards. And additionally, you're going to be able to move up here. And of course you can go horizontally as well. When you get to a boss, you'll gain an achievement. And these achievements are basically one use items. When you utilize them, it'll have a specific ability on them. And that will trigger when you choose to utilize it, giving you some type of benefit throughout the game. And they're very, very useful. One for each player. So once you go to the red boss, you can't go back and get another one. You have to go to a new boss to gain a new benefit. Another thing to note too, is when you're moving across these specific little areas here, there's a number on the top left-hand side of each of the cards. And as you move across, that is going to give you company influence. So one company, two company, uh, two company influence and zero. The cards that are more useful, like this one here for sticky notes, are going to be less useful in company influence. And the ones that are obviously less useful in sticky notes will be more beneficial in company influence. And that's basically the game. Get to all three of these bosses, gain all their achievements, and get back after, of course, you gain all three bosses. You'll flip this card for the performance review. Getting your character to that space is going to allow you to win the game as long as you get there before anybody else. A little bit of a racing game, a little bit of tableau management or hand management, I should say, with office politics, and of course, tile placement to get around the board in Sisyphus Corp. The basic idea of the game, can you succeed before anybody else? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and discuss my review of the game and whether or not you should pick this game up currently on Kickstarter, link down below in the description. Traveling on the corporate ladder can be difficult, and in this game, that rings true. Basically, in this game, you are racing your opponents, gathering boss cards and bringing them home before anybody else, but of course, there is a bunch of things that you can do to satisfy the conditions easier and your opponents can do to mess you over and that is going to be in the form of office politics the game's variation differs based on how you place your cards where you choose to move and of course the different decks of cards you choose to utilize when playing the game uh, this game here there's a ton of different cards with a ton of different variations I just want to go over a couple of them the different types of cards that you can get first of all you have report to HR this is a card that stops players from utilizing office politics cards but refunds funds them their costs that are associated with whatever they paid for the card. There's stuff like stand in for someone. You can reveal this card and it's now a wild that will allow you to pay its cost for other cards because a lot of cards in the game are going to cost company influence as well as the same type of card such as uh, belittling the competition. For one influence, you can swap a tile that's one space away. Um, and then, of course, if you spend additional influence, you can swap additional tile, uh, the, the tile additionally farther away. So instead of one space away, it can be two. And for another add-on, you can spend two of the same card, belittling the competition, to swap and be on the tile that you're swapping. So you can actually swap yourself, moving yourself farther along. Uh, something like spread a rumor. You can go ahead and rotate a tile that is one tile away in any direction or you can add more influence to rotate farther or if you want you can rotate the tile that you're on if you spend
and one of the same exact card. So it'll cost you to spread the rumor in addition to an extra pol uh, uh, political influence because, or yeah, the, the not political, the current company influence. Uh, call in a favor, select an unoccupied uh, tile that's one away and either put it in your hand or put it in the bottom of the deck. And if you want, you can spend influence to do it farther away, which is a lot of those green cards. And finally, there's a blue card here. This one here is gonna let you swap locations with a player that's one tile away, but you do not gain any influence that is on the tile that you switch with. And if you want, you can spend additional uh, currency in order to go even farther away so they can be two spaces away instead. Very, very powerful, but also very, very costly. There's a lot of certificates in the game. There's four for each of the different bosses, at least with what I have here in the prototype. Uh, one of them is in which is at the end of the workday, you can pick up one office politics card and instead of discarding it after using it, you can keep it. Uh, or this one here, this one says that on a for this specific workday, you can go ahead and pick up one of these green cubes, which is specifically used for research. So there are different cubes in the game that you can pick up uh, to utilize in, in addition to the actions you normally get, which will let you use that specific action. And these cards are what are going to allow you to do that in the game. Uh, I played a walkthrough or playthrough video with Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker and my wife. We played this game and we had a lot of fun with it. We played a couple times before that as well. And if you're interested, you can take a look at that when the video gets put up live from his from his YouTube channel, I'll go ahead and post that so you can see a live play of the game. You can see how many cards we get, what specific cards we're utilizing, all the basic little specific rules that I didn't go into detail with. If you don't really want to read the rule book, that will be a good in tandem video to watch so you can see how it's played and what is utilized and how you can kind of uh, change the game based on what setup you want to use. Because there are different setups in the game that you can choose from the starting setup to basically making your own customizable setup. Uh, the game itself looks like you're moving around in a office location. Uh, of course, you are utilizing tiles slash cards to go on certain spaces and they do have differentiations based on more sticky notes or less, more of the influence or less, and how you choose to place them makes a great difference as well as what you choose to use on your cards. In general, you would think that based on the fact that you all have three actions, the player who gets their place first is going to be the one that gets back first. But what changes the game is obviously the certificates, but more importantly, the office politic cards. Depending on what you get and how you utilize your hand, you can basically maneuver yourself across the board in a better way. And of course, which, what, which spaces you choose to move on make a huge difference as well. This is a take that game in nature, but it also has a bunch of other stuff going on. You are, of course, utilizing your hand management to the best of your capability, trying to save certain cards and use certain cards at the best possible time to rotate, to move sticky notes around, to basically push players into a specific direction to keep them from getting to each of the bosses they need to get to and maneuvering yourself in the best laid position that you possibly can be in as well. You think that you're winning this game when all of a sudden craziness can occur just based on the different political influence cards or office politics cards. I don't know I keep saying political, but office politics cards. I guess because the cards say politics on them. Uh, the artwork is is fine. It's, it's like a corporate game, so it's going to kind of be bland on purpose. The idea of it is you are moving through an office building, which probably can turn off certain people or turn certain people, I guess, on if they like that specific type of artwork. For me, it, it's fine. It does exactly what it's supposed to do for this specific type of game, but I can see how it can go either or. Uh, of course, there is random chance in the game, depending on what cards you get for uh, the office politic cards. That can make a big difference if you get all of the certain type of card that you need, being able to counter other players' cards. And of course, how you choose to place your locations based on which ones you have makes a difference. If you don't have the right sticky note cards to place down to move, you might slow yourself down that's always a possibility in the game. Games are rather quick, rather simple, and it's easy to teach the game after about four or five minutes. People generally understand the game after about maybe two to even three rounds max. They already know what they need to do. It's a pretty straightforward racing game. It's just, can you utilize what you have in order to get across the game? Now, of course, there is politics involved as well. If somebody's kind of on their own and two other players are working together or working in tandem, attempting to get to certain areas, you might want to work together if somebody is ahead of you and kind of try and mess them over as opposed to yourself, which can kind of push people in the front backwards a little bit, but that can also help them too. It depends what cards they have in their hand. You might think you're hurting somebody, but in fact, you're actually helping them because you didn't realize what they intended to do on the turn after yours. And of course, you also don't know what your opponents are going to do. And that does change the board around. The best laid plans in this game can turn to utter rubbish the moment you're not expecting them to. And you might think you've got it in the bag when all of a sudden 
sudden your tile that you need is no longer there, the cards in your hand are not available to you in order to get to the specific place you want to get to, and now you've lost an entire turn making up for one thing that an opponent has done. If you like aggressive games, if you like racing games, and if you like games that involve office politics, this is definitely one I would suggest checking out. We had a lot of fun with this one, and you can see us playing it on the playthrough to see it for yourself. I think Callie beat us that game, as well as the previous game, too. She beat us a lot in this game. She's very good at them. I'm not so great at these games, but I definitely do enjoy this, these games. I enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun, and it's one I would strongly suggest for people who enjoyed this game. This is one of those things where if you see the game, you hear the game, you understand how it plays, you're going to know whether you like this game or not. It's going to appease certain people. It's going to not appease other people based on the randomness, the chance, and the aggressive play. But overall, a solid little game. Enjoyable. Sisyphus Corp. Take a look down below if you're interested in picking the game up on Kickstarter. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that bell notification button. It does greatly help us out. We do greatly appreciate it. You can also go and check us out live every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we stream games just like this one every week. We've got a special guest coming this week as well as we're playing the game Blinks and of course his game Mission Catastrophe. And if you want to play those games with us, go ahead and join. There's probably going to be different Tabletopia links. So there's going to be able to watch us play and of course earn bonus giveaways. There's going to be giveaways on the stream. We like to give things away when we can and you'll have the opportunity to win. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to delving in the corporate ladder with you next time.